Biblical angels are often depicted as spiritual beings who serve as messengers and agents of God. While they may dwell in the heavenly realms, they are believed to be present in our everyday lives, guiding and protecting us. With that in mind, here are a few words exploring the concept of biblical angels around us. Angels are invisible beings that exist in the spiritual realm, but have the ability to interact with the physical world. They are sent by God to fulfill various tasks and assignments. Some are described as cherubim or seraphim, possessing powerful and awe-inspiring appearances. Others appear as ordinary humans, blending seamlessly into our surroundings. These heavenly messengers are there not only to carry out God's will, but also to watch over and assist the people of faith. Biblical accounts show that angels have invisibly intervened in human affairs countless times throughout history. They have appeared to prophets, guiding and encouraging them. Abraham, for example, received a visit from three angels who foretold the birth of his son, Isaac. In the New Testament, angels played a vital role in the birth of Jesus, announcing his coming to the shepherds and guiding the wise men to the manger. Angels can also protect people from harm, as seen in the story of Daniel in the lion's den. An angel stood guard and prevented the lions from attacking him. Similarly, angels rescued Lot and his family from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. While angels are often depicted as messengers from God, they are also known to serve as spiritual guides and sources of comfort. They are attuned to our needs and are present to offer guidance, support and encouragement during times of trial or confusion. They provide strength and comfort to those who seek God's wisdom and help. It is believed that angels continue to be present and active in our lives today, although their presence may remain largely unseen. It is said that they rejoice when one sinner repents and that they are assigned to guard and protect those who believe in God. We may not always be aware of their presence, but their actions and guidance can be felt if we open our hearts and minds to their influence. The concept of a war in heaven is mentioned in the Bible in the book of Revelation. According to the scriptures, a war erupted in the celestial realm between the forces of good and evil. This cosmic battle is believed to have taken place before the creation of the earth and could be seen as a metaphorical depiction of the struggle between God and Satan. The story unfolds in Revelation 12, 7, 9, where it is stated, and war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. These verses illustrate a celestial battle between the archangel Michael and the dragon, who is identified as the devil or Satan. The outcome of the conflict reveals the defeat of the demonic forces and they are cast down from heaven to the earth along with their leader. The war in heaven signifies the ancient struggle between good and evil, light and darkness, and showcases the power of God over all cosmic beings, including the fallen angels led by Satan. It implies that Satan ultimately rebelled against God, desiring to assert his own authority and challenge the divine order. However, God's supremacy prevails, and he defeats the forces of evil, banishing Satan and his minions from heaven. This event is significant, as it also sets the stage for subsequent events, such as the temptation of humanity in the Garden of Eden, and the ongoing spiritual battle between good and evil on earth. It reinforces the belief in God's ultimate victory, and the eternal consequences for those who choose to align themselves with the devil. Overall, the war in heaven is portrayed as a pivotal celestial conflict in the Bible, illustrating the spiritual realities underlying the human experience and serving as a reminder of the eternal consequences of choosing between good and evil. Let's get the conversation starting. How do you feel about God's supremacy continues to prevail?
biblical concept of the end times, also known as eschatology, refers to the final events that will take place in the world, according to the teachings of the Bible. It is a topic that has intrigued and fascinated believers for centuries, as it gives hope for the ultimate victory of good over evil and the fulfillment of God's plan for humanity. The biblical end times are prominently depicted in the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament. According to this book, the end times will be characterized by a series of significant events and signs, including the return of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the dead, the final judgment, and the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. The first significant event in the end times is the return of Jesus Christ. According to biblical prophecy, Jesus will come back to the earth to gather all believers and establish his reign. This event, commonly known as the Second Coming, will be preceded by various signs including natural disasters, wars and the rise of false prophets. Following the Second Coming, the resurrection of the dead will occur. The Bible teaches that all people from every nation will rise from the dead, believers unto eternal life and unbelievers unto eternal punishment. This resurrection will usher in the final judgment, where God will judge every individual according to their deeds. Once the final judgment is complete, God will establish his eternal kingdom. This kingdom, also referred to as the New Jerusalem, will be a place of perfect peace, harmony, and righteousness. It will be a dwelling place for all believers, who will enjoy a close relationship with God and experience his blessings in their fullness. Although the details of the biblical end times are not entirely clear, Christians are encouraged to live in expectant hope and preparation for these events. The teachings of the end times remind believers to remain faithful, upright and watchful as they wait for the fulfillment of God's promises. In conclusion, the biblical end times describe a remarkable sequence of events that will culminate in the return of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the dead, the final judgment, and the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. While the specifics may be subject to interpretation, the teachings provide believers with hope, encouragement, and a reminder to live a life that is pleasing to God. Please get the conversation starting in the comments. Do a lot of people think the end times is a myth? Are we ready for what's coming? Shamgar is a biblical figure mentioned in the book of Judges in the Old Testament. Although relatively little is known about him, his story is highlighted in the book as an example of God's power and the extraordinary feats that can be accomplished when someone is willing to trust in him. According to the Bible, Shamgar was the son of Anath, making him an Israelite. He is described as a judge and a deliverer of Israel during a time of oppression. During his era, the Israelites were being oppressed by the Philistines, a powerful neighboring kingdom. The Philistines had become a dominant force in the region and their military might was causing great suffering to the Israelite people. In Judges 3.31, it is mentioned that Shamgar rose up as a leader and successfully led a rebellion against the oppressive Philistines. He is credited with killing 600 Philistines with an ox goat, which was essentially a long stick with a pointed metal tip used to prod animals. This incredible feat is often interpreted as a sign of God's intervention and power since it would have been almost impossible for one person to defeat so many skilled soldiers. Shamgar's story is significant because it demonstrates the power of God to use unlikely heroes to accomplish great things. Shamgar was not a trained warrior or a well-known leader, but his faith and courage allowed him to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. This story serves as an inspiration for believers that God can and will use anyone who is willing to trust in him and step out in faith. Furthermore, the story of Shamgar highlights the importance of using the resources available to us, no matter how unconventional they may seem. Shamgar used an ox goad, 
a simple farming tool, as his weapon. Instead of being limited by what was at hand, he made the most of his resources and accomplished a great victory. This teaches us a valuable lesson about resourcefulness and the potential for success when we use what we already have. Overall, Shamgar's story in the Bible is a testament to the power of God to deliver his people and to use ordinary individuals to accomplish extraordinary feats. His faith, courage and resourcefulness serve as an example for believers today who face trials and difficulties of their own. Shamgar's story encourages us to trust in God, make the most of what we have been given and step out in faith knowing that with him on our side, we can overcome any obstacle. Let's get the conversation starting. Does Shamgar's story strengthen your faith to put your trust more in God? 